What's going on, family? It's your guy, Bora the Lucky Libra, and thank you for tuning in to another episode. As y'all can see by the title, we're wrapping up the signs through the houses series with Pisces in the seventh house. Shout out to all my Virgo risings in the building. Shout out to y'all. All right. So let's make sure we like, share, subscribe so we can circulate these gems. Okay. Tap into my website if you like to connect with the Lucky Libra. Tap into my Patreon, all right? If you like to dive deeper, let's get right into it. All right, y'all. Last placement in the seventh house. We got my good old Pisces in the seventh house, man. Shout out to my Virgo Rises. All right, so first of all, what is the seventh house? The seventh house is the house that rules relationships, one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one relationships, partnerships, marriage, creative co collaborations, Things you experience when you're interacting with others out in the world and huge influences in your relationships and possibly in uh, traits that may play out in your partner. All right. There's Is there other parts of the chart that influence these type of things? Yes. But is this one of the main parts of the chart that influence things with relationships and your partner? Yes. The seven house. So also, and also the seven house uh, shows us. It shows us um, how we learn from learn about ourselves from other people. Sorry, y'all, if it look like I'm a little bit off edge. This is the last video I've been up all night. We got to knock these out, all right? So I'm going to get into it. I'm a, this, la this last bit of energy I got left in the tank is going all to y'all right now, Virgo Rising. All right? It's going all to y'all right now. Okay? I already know how y'all get down. If you're going to do something, do it good, Boro. Do it with some quality. Do it with some standards. So I ain't going to half-ass y'all. All right? Now. We throw Pisces in the seventh house, right? We throw Pisces up in the seventh house. So first of all, what do we need to know? What, uh, what do what's the first thing first? Here? We need to know the, know the ruler. We need we need to know where Jupiter's at. We need to know where Jupiter's at. So go find the house Jupiter's in. The house Jupiter is in is where you may have met a lot of your boo things in this lifetime. All right, you you married, you might have met your partner out that house. You might have met your husband wife. I say out this house. This is a lot. This is gonna be an area of life where a lot of your fruitful relationships are gonna develop. Twin flames, soulmates, all of them, all of their asses come out of this house. All right. And this is also gonna be whatever house Jupiter is in, it's gonna bring a lot of those influences into the seventh house and partially the house Neptune is in. Partially. Okay. So, but we want to focus on Jupiter. That's the main ruler here. All right. So when we talk about Pisces in the seventh house. Mutable water, ruled by Jupiter, co-ruled by Neptune, and we just dump it into the house of relationships, right? So off rip, let me just say this, off rip, Virgo Risings. Is there a way I could say this without sounding mean? I mean, we do keep, we do, we, we, we keep it a buck on this channel, right? Listen, Pisces in the seventh house being motherfucking Virgo risings, y'all be in la la land in y'all relationships, all right? <laughs> y'all be in la la land in y'all relationships. Because, and it really don't be y'all fault though. It really don't be y'all fault. So I don't want to, to make y'all feel like, it's like, damn, boy, what the fuck, what I be doing wrong? Is the, is the one, is, is it me? This is the way I'm picking them? Let's break it down here. Now, Pisces is a very intimate sign, it's very intimate. You know, it loves to connect. It, 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 it's a it's a, it's a great listener. It's, it's understanding, but it's very dreamy. When you think of Pisces, you gotta think of that twelfth house. When you think of the twelfth house, you gotta look at the planets that's that love the twelfth house. You got Jupiter, Neptune, and uh, Venus. These are the energies, the planets that resonate well in this house. So you got things dealing with your imagination, your dreams, potential. Uh, your feelings and emotions, your pleasures, what makes you feel good. So you have, you attract these vibes in your relationship. You attract these vibes when you're connecting with people in the world. People may give you a lot of access to things that you like or love. You can develop strong support systems, Virgo Risings out this house. But then again, you can also manifest situations where the people that you keep in your life or the people that you date or the people in your social circle, they keep you detached, disconnected from reality and responsibilities here so what happens here what happens is you know you meet this partner you start dating and and the situation feels so good 
it feel it, 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 it's matching a lot of the potential you probably had in your subconscious. You know, sometimes it feels a little too good to be real when you building a connection or rapport with somebody, Virgo Risings, and we know how critical you are. So sometimes it's hard to even let you flow. And that's what you learn in the seventh house at times with Pisces here, to let your relationships flow a bit more, but you gotta let it flow with discernment though, all right? And that's not the easiest, that is one of the hardest things for you to find. How do I let this situation with this person that I like, that I'm dating, how the fuck do I let this shit flow without being too either too anal, too critical about what's happening, how it happens, when they contact me, where we go out to eat, how we do things, how they communicate, what they do. Like, you gotta be, you gotta try your best to let things flow. It's Jupiter here. You're gonna go through a lot of relationship experiences. Um, and when I say y'all be in La La Land, that's what happens. You date somebody and you can get, Pisces here can get lost in the potential of a relationship and instead of grasping the reality or, or remaining in the moment, you got to remain in the moment when you're dealing with somebody in a relationship, especially when you really like them. And you, you got to, because y'all could shoot high standards here. It's it's Jupiter. Jupiter expands, gases things up. Pisces don't got no limits. So when it comes, you can expect a lot of your partner, guys. You got to be careful. That. You, gotta, you can expect a little too much of your partner or you can shoot for... You can set very high expectations. It's not, and that's never a bad thing to have high expectations, high standards for things that you're involved in, right? But you have to be careful of that when you're dealing, putting that, those on, upon other people, all right? Give yourself a chance to learn somebody, understand somebody, and then, you know, that'll help you with certain more realistic expectations or standards with things in the relationship. You know, people here, uh, Pisces in the seventh house, you know, with this type of energy, you will, uh, you have to make sure intimacy, lust, touch, sensuality, not sexuality, sensuality. You got to make sure these things don't uh, blind you from understanding different parts about the person you're building a connection with. Okay. You have to understand that. Pisces in the seventh house can bring you to very blissful moments in reality. Like, like I've, I've said a lot of times, speaking about this placement, you will manifest relationships where this person that you're connected to, they're not necessarily doing nothing wrong, right? Let's say they're not being narcissistic, manipulating you, none of that shit. They're just getting to know you, connecting with you to stand the third. And with Pisces in the seventh house, Virgo rising, y'all can get so invested into the relationship, so invested into this dream that you're living out of a relationship situation in your in real life that you lose track of what the fuck you're doing in the first house. You lose track of reality. Uh, uh, time don't matter no more. You are officially in, the, in La La Land. You are officially... In another world, in another realm, you black things out because this relationship that you attracted, this person that you attracted does such a great job helping you unplug and exhale from reality. So that is a great thing in a relationship, being able to connect to your partner and being, being able to lean on them or connect with them in a type of, in a type of way where when you're with them, they help take any burdens of life up off you and pressures of life up off you help you ex exhale release that's a very that's a very important thing to have in your relationship right the strongest relationships that is very prominent but um you just have to make sure you're balanced Pis of uh, uh pisces and seven house virgo rising you can't just indulge yourself into that shit pisces and seven house can indulge in relationships make relationship make a relationship your life And then it's such an impact here when things don't pan out a certain way. Be very impactful on the Virgo rising with Pisces in the seventh house. Now, one thing I love about this placement is it don't matter what happens in that relationship, you'll be at least, you have a Jupiter rule seventh house, so you're going to leave the relationship at least look, taking the lesson from it or trying, putting effort to extract the lesson out of it. This Pisces, this Jupiter is always going to look at things from a, uh, what was the reason for this? You know, what did this situation mean? Put a philosophical uh, outlook on it. Understand it from uh, how did I attract this experience? What this experience was supposed to teach me? They're going to have these influences in their relationships. Uh, 
their partners can be emotionally can be emotionally unstable. They could manifest some emotionally unstable partners or partners that don't know how to deal with the emotions. And that puts you into a real counseling like energies with people that you attract in your life. You are you become the person that people want to confide in. You become the person Virgo rising that people need to lean on for emotional stability. You provide stability for others and that starts becoming draining for you. But hey, you got you a Virgo in the first house. You love to service. You love to help others. And you got Pisces in the second house. So what happens? Your ass start developing too big of a heart. Way too big of a heart. You have to watch that shit with Pisces, with Virgo and Pisces on this first seven house axis, Virgo rising. Be careful of your ability to service and help not doing that shit with boundaries because it could become draining. And you allow, you will jump into sacrificial energies with Pisces here. You know, you this axis, though, yeah, these opposite signs, Virgo and Pisces, these are two of the most sacrificial signs in the zodiac, two of the most selfless signs in the zodiac. So you got to make sure, you know, uh, don't be too hard on yourself when you put a certain effort into a relationship or a person and it don't pan out a certain way. But over time, you got to understand that uh, you can't just allow yourself to you can't allow yourself to lose yourself in relationships at times. You always have to make sure no matter how high the relationship feels at the moment that you're able to go to sleep understanding the reality and the foundation of what you guys are building and working to and making sure as much as possible you're aware of how this person thinks and sees the relationship because it's really easy to start putting your potential how you want to see the relationship beyond what the reality is you pisces in the same house you're good for that you're good for that but more importantly, I want you to understand how to build boundaries so people that uh, lean on you for stability, emotional emotional stability or dependence, that it doesn't become draining upon you, all right? I don't want to see y'all go through those things. You're going to experience it, though. You're going to experience it because it's your energy. That's just your personality. You're going you're, you're gonna to experience it consciously. You're going to know you're doing it. This ain't a subconscious thing. You know you, know you do this shit. You know when you start liking somebody, it's like, oh, man. I'm about to clean their whole house. Uh, look at me in love again. I'm about to pay all their bills. <laughs> I'm about to stay up all night with them. Get no sleep for work. Like So you know you consciously make these decisions and do these things. you know, Or you know you, you willingly put yourself in uh, positions that may be draining for you. Or may have to make it may be sacrificial for you. But it's supportive and helpful for others. And guys, Virgo Rising, this is not just in your intimate relationships. You do this with a lot of people that you care about in your life. So you got to be careful of that. Sometimes y'all do shit like that for people that... Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes y'all do that shit for people that you don't even have a rapport built like that, with them like that. It's it's in your nature, you know? Real open-hearted here. Pisces and the seven house, Virgo, I need y'all to, to realize that you need to be conscious that you be... You change yourself for others. Now, this is the thing. You're mutable, so you're real flexible and you're adaptable. Um, well, this is not like this is your sun and moon, so excuse me. You're mutable with your rising sign, Virgo energy, so you're going to be more flexible and adaptable with your personality, dealing with more realistic matters, building stability, security. You're going to have a psyche to be able to learn from how other people build security, stability, you're going to uh, be able to formulate things into your own blueprint to build your own regiment and, and formula as to how you like to build foundation in your personal life, who you could rely on in your personal life. So you were flexible in that sense, right? Now, when it gets into the seventh house, Pisces itself is mutable water. So it's very adaptable to the emotions and inner thoughts and internal energies of others. And it's and you guys sometimes change yourself to mold to be a mold in the relationship. Instead of coming into the relationship and making sure you're, you you meet me, this is me. This I'm gonna meet you here. You meet me here. Now whatever don't clash, let's acknowledge. I mean whatever don't co correlate with each other. When we come together, let's acknowledge that and then see how we go about that. Sometimes Virgo Risings, you skip that process. Once you pick up on something that you feel like may clash with a partner, you'll try to change that about yourself. Hide it, disguise it, and 
this could start this could be too much this take too much of a toll on you over time pisces i'm um, uh, pisces in the seventh house this this can take too much of a toll over time this becomes an emotional responsibility which may turn into a burden now when somebody is not uh, appreciative or thankful of your efforts right now it makes now you feel uh, a part of you was gone you put all that energy work into a relationship to build a rapport for what? These are like all the negative energies you could be dealing with in those in that worst case scenario. All right, guys. So I just want y'all to be conscious of that in every relationship y'all yeah, deal with, friendship, business relationship. Don't be having people in your business relationship, any type of partnerships that you deal with, including your intimate relationship. Don't be having people taking advantage of your ability to help and support. You're so supportive of the situation and, and people taking advantage of that, trying to keep you in an illusion for you to keep exerting energy so they don't have to do enough that much work or whatnot. This is another thing about Pisces and the Seventh House. You got to know how to sometimes fall back here. You got to know how to fall back in order to see what type of effort the partner was going to put in. Because that's your duty. Even if I tell y'all, even if I tell y'all, you know, Y'all gonna y'all live for that in relationships. Y'all like to help. Y'all like to stabilize your partner. You like to you know uh, bring support. You like to be. You like to play a role for knowing that your partner can lean on you for some type of stability, for some type of understanding to exhale. So it's great for you to have a partner that can reciprocate these energies because sometimes. Uh, when things get extreme in relationships, you're going to need somebody to rely on. You're going to need somebody you can lean on. You know, got that. You got that Virgo in the first house. So you're going to need somebody to be like, yo, babe, relax. You know, somebody to ease the, ease the nervous system. Somebody to ease the, the mind chatter. All right. But, um. Yes, these are like the most important things to understand with Pisces in that seventh house, man. Y'all get real sacrificial open here. These are your, uh, what's the phrase? Uh, 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 I'm a, I'm a old, I'm a old fashioned rope. I don't know what, the, I don't know. It's, it's late, y'all. It's late. But overall, these people are very romantic. They, 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 they seek romance. They seek connection. They seek an intimate connection, you know. They seek it so much that when they get it, they can get lost in the potential of the shit before it even <laughs> takes off. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what we got with Pisces in the seventh house. Oh, yeah. Another thing here. Another thing here. This is a Jupiter ruled house. This is a Jupiter ruled house. So they're going to want to experience things with their partner, of course. They're going to want to experience new things with their partner. If, if you know, if they can learn from you, man, that's big time for them. If they feel like dating you, connecting to you is really uh, bringing them into opening up new dimensions in their life or whatnot. Man, you know, they could look at you. My camera keep on cutting off or whatnot, so I got to edit this video too. I think the universe is telling me shut it down. It's like, all right, you said enough, motherfucker. But anyways, yeah, that's this is that's going to be something that uh, Pi uh, Pisces and somebody's going to be real attracted to. Um, obviously, somebody they could learn from, somebody that could teach them something, somebody could experience new things with them, somebody that's not blocking your experiences. Uh, when they want to engage in something together, they down to cooperate. They're going to love cooperation here and they're going to be real cooperative individuals in relationships, period, you know. I just want y'all to understand to be to put more boundaries up in your relationship. Try to deal with uh, being in the present in relationship. That might be one of the most key things for y'all to understand in relationships. Virgo risings, being present in a relationship. Pisces in the seventh house, you know, may attract some real creative individuals in this seventh house. Spiritually influenced people here. All right, strong belief system. They got strong belief systems, and just Jupiter being in the seventh house. Just, they're gonna have to. You're gonna have to share belief systems. You're gonna if, if just Virgo rising into astrology that you're gonna have to be in a, into astrology to date them. But that's what we got going on for the most part with Pisces in the seventh house, y'all. All right, real affectionate, romantic, seeking connection type of individual in relationship. Very understanding, great listeners. Give a lot of counseling, like energy. You know, help you exhale, release here. Uh, they they. A lot of healing properties they they uh 
include into their relationships. I just need y'all to make sure that y'all not jumping into delusional energies in your relationships. You're able to be in the moment, grasp reality in your relationships or whatnot, and try not to let what hasn't happened dictate how you're going to move on things in a relationship. That's probably something I didn't say too much of, but because you deal with that potential energy, that dreamy energy, Pisces, sometimes you start to, uh, you start to, psych yourself up as if the future already manifested in your relationships and that causes you to make certain to take certain actions in the present that is very important that you don't base your actions or how you're about to conduct yourself in a relationship based off things that haven't happened yet pisces because that comes that's the i mean i keep calling y'all pisces virgo rising that's the pisces will once again expand things and a potential and things get dreamy and blurry where it's at all right you just have to do your best to stay as grounded as possible and be in the moment as much as possible when you're dealing with something that you're really intrigued by or you see a lot of value and potential in. All right. So that's what we got going on. Yeah, that are those are the signs through the seventh house. That's Pisces in the seventh house. Next, we're going to get into signs through the eighth, eighth house family. So please make sure you like, share, subscribe so we could circulate these gems. Make sure to tap into my Patreon if you like to dive deeper. Tap into my web, website if you like to connect with the Lucky Libra. Until next time, family. Peace.